as kuyen bide kuyen as ve bide maş o da mi de hacha itme maş o mi sana koyulu Tajikistan here, that is Afghanistan right there. Living in the wild here on Prime Revolution. My partner Clint Capuro has been wanting to come Marco Polo hunting for about four or five years now. It's been a lifelong dream of mine being a sheep hunter and former sheep guide to come to Central Asia, Tajikistan and hunt Marco Polo sheep, which is the, the highest altitude sheep in the world, the biggest sheep in the world, the biggest of the Argolis. So this year earlier at Sheep Show, we hooked up with Brian Martin at uh, Asian Mountain Outfitters and booked this hunt. I thought it would be cool to get a couple of our friends to go. We always like to, to bring our, our guys from Cryptex. So Josh uh, wanted to shoot an Ibex and, and a Marco Polo. Clint asked Mike Altimus, who's a buddy of ours from Reno. He, he decided he would come with us too and shoot an Ibex and me and Mike were really shooting polos. After talking to my brother, who, who has been over here hunting Marco Polo sheep, he said the hardest part of the trip is going to be the travel. I didn't believe him on how long and strenuous, I guess, it would be and more of a mental game to, to get to where you actually are at the camp and in the hunting area. It's four and a half days from my house in, in Reno to this camp in Tajikistan. We were in planes over 20 hours, probably up to 30 hours total between plane flights and uh, holdovers. Well, it's an hour and a half flight from Reno to LA, a 13 and a half hour flight from LA to Istanbul, Turkey, another five hours from Istanbul to the capital of Tajikistan, which is Dushanbe. And then we have a day's drive to the town of Harok from Dushan Bay. And you change 12 to 13 hours from the time zone between uh, from the west coast. It's painful, but it's, it's part of the adventure, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. It was a great ride up here. That 20-hour drive we took up here, we, we stopped overnight in a place. Beautiful hotel right in, in Kroke there, where, where the president stays when he comes to Kroke. right here in the middle of Central Asia, basically, and it's just an awesome place.
Made it to sheep camp. So far, so good. For the middle of uh, absolutely nowhere, this is a uh, pretty great accommodation. This definitely hasn't been a boring ride, I can tell you that. The roads leave a little bit to be desired, so it was a great app workout. So I'm going to go ahead and have my apps for a couple days. The vertical and the cardio, not so much. I'm sure we'll get plenty of that starting tomorrow. What happens to most hunters is they get here, this base camp is 12,200 feet, which is actually not high for where we're hunting. We're hunting up to 16,000 sometimes. The highest we went on this trip was 16,500. So when you first get here, your body's not acclimatized. Being our first time here, for me anyway, everything looks the same <laughs> around here. It's very barren, uh, a lot of rocks, a lot of, I guess back home in Nevada, what we would call weeds. And these mountains are, are giant. And when you're sitting at 13,000 feet for your base camp, the nerves start to set in a, a little bit. Are you gonna be okay at the elevation? How are your legs gonna do? How are your lungs gonna do? When you come to a hunt like this, Unfortunately, you'll, everybody's going to have a weakness. Uh, it's either the shooting, it's the altitude, it's the language barrier, it's the food, it's the travel, it's the jet lag. You know, it was nice to get a little acclimated to the elevation here at camp on the first day, sight in our rifles, check our zeros, make sure everything was good, and then the anticipation sets in for the next day. A little nervous, super excited. Marco Polo hunting done the right way is a really a challenge. You know, a lot of people come to Tajikistan and there's some camps they can shoot them from the hood of the Jeep. When we hunt here, we can't do that. Most of this area, you'd have to look, look for that kind of a shot. It doesn't happen very often. So we prefer to hunt them on the ground, on foot. I've been sheep hunting before. Harvested some great North American sheep. I'm kind of still in awe of this country that I'm here. Kind of a surreal feeling. We're looking at some great rams right now. Pretty cool experience seeing my first Marco Polo sheep in the actual wild. We chased them all day. The wind gave us problems. The sheep gave us problems and they gave us a slip. Unbelievably talented sheep. I mean, they, they see you, they smell you, they know that something's not right. And they are the, for lack of a better word, the spookiest and smartest animal I think I've ever hunted in my life. They're very cagey. How they can get away from you is pretty amazing. Mental toughness is probably your best thing because you can be totally prepared physically and you can have the best gun, but if you come over here and you mentally you fail, you won't do well. First day of hunting with Mike and Clint, these guys weren't used to the elevation here, though they trained hard back home. No air up here, buddy. No air. So when you hike around it between 14 and 16,000 plus feet, and you're out of oxygen and your legs are tired, you've put in a full day. But just to see those animals on the hoof is, is all worth it. One of the biggest parts that has hit us has been the altitude sickness, and we took the altitude pills, and they made us sick. They say you adjust about 2,000 feet a day, so if you came from 5,000 feet, that would take you about four or five days to get fully acclimatized, and you're not really fully acclimatized because you got too many other shocks in your system. Get everything right, but it just seems like the first day or two or three when you're actually out there hunting, and you go from 12,000 500, which is approximately what the main camp is here, to the uh, spike camp, which is 13.8. You, you just don't get away from that altitude. You know, that whole night I was sick. The elevation didn't let them uh, to be 100% ready for hunting. Day two, Tajikistan on the mountain. Yesterday, 
found a really good group of rams. Couldn't seal the deal. A little worried about my partner, Clint. Feeling a little peaked this morning with the altitude. We just spotted some rams, so we're gonna see if we can make a plan here. We had moved from the main base camp to a spike camp. And after the first day's stock that uh, didn't work out, we were back in the same area and they had actually spotted some sheep above our spike camp. So we just took off walking from camp. We got two big bunches of rams up here. We've been following them all day. We spotted them this morning about three miles back. Most of them went up this canyon. We're gonna one by one with this big group of guys kind of try to get across this valley and up the other side a little bit. It took all day to get there, to get into position where we might possibly have a shot. It was about a 10 hour stalk and it was due to a lot of factors. A lot of sheep on both sides of the valley. Sheep that weren't big enough to shoot, some ewes that were in the way, and the sheep that we wanted to shoot were in a position where we couldn't move on them because we'd get winded. And if we did move, they would see us. It was very mentally challenging as well as physically challenging. In that entire 10 hours, I can tell you that these guides literally pulled us to those sheep because I was very sick. I couldn't move. You're taking one step and closely placing it right in front of your other foot. You got no energy in your legs. You got no oxygen in your blood and, and your body's shutting down. I'm ready to go kill some. I'm tired. We've been out here for about 14 hours. I'm tired. It was more of a chess game than anything uh, to get into position. We get up there and we get within, you know, probably 300 yards of where we need to be to get a shot. And Shavkat says, looks at me and smiles and says, 30 more meters, 30 more meters, you know? And I said, yeah, keep lying to me, brother. We're gonna make her. Any hunt that you're on, if if you love the backcountry, if you love big game hunting, there's that level of anticipation and excitement right before you might possibly get that shot. We thought at that point that we had these Marco Polo sheep dead to rights. I mean, they were down on the bottom. They couldn't see us. We were gonna make a play, sneak to a rock. Uh, we had it all ranged out. Immediately knew it was bad when the wind hit me in the back of the head and I looked at Brian Martin. He's like, this isn't good, the wind changed. When that wind changed, those sheep smelled us from over 600 yards away. They just blew up, you know, they rams going up the hill. We're camera guys trying to figure out which one we're gonna shoot. I got guys speaking to me in Tajik. I got guys speaking to me in American. I don't even know what the hell they're saying. I'm so jacked up from the altitude sickness and, and now I got a major adrenaline going. And they started up the canyon on the other side from us and they were in two or three different groups. The last three rams come up, we wanted to get two of them. Clint and I got set up on the rifles, you know, threw the bipods down. Brian hit us with a range, dialed in the vortex. As soon as they stopped and turned broadside and gave us a good shot. We went uh, one, two, three. We let a couple fly out of the proof at 525 yards and you know both rams went down immediately. Great job, brother. Thanks guys for, for dragging us up the hill. <laughs> that whole thing happened very fast, but it felt like it took forever. We put our cameraman in a big time rush. So if you're a hunter, when you're in the heat of the moment, you've worked so hard all day to get to this point. If the camera shot is not perfect, I hope you still keep watching the show and I hope you understand. I'm 52 years old and about, I don't know man. <laughs> this week on the 6th, I didn't think it was gonna happen. He drugged me up that hill. I was puking, unbelievable. There was a lot of emotions going on there, and we weren't our normal selves, I can tell you that. I was borderline delusional. You know, Clint and I made it happen together on the same mountain. You know, him and I have been best of friends since we were kids, so to share that experience with him on the same mountain where we, uh, we shot two beautiful Marco Polo sheep was, was a great experience.
going pretty hard. Decided to take the afternoon off. We're using Ibex liver as bait down here on the river, just below the main camp. This is a nice little break in the uh, Marco Polo sheep hunting program. Let me tell you, you put it out there pretty hard, then you get to have a little afternoon off. It's a pretty good operation. This is definitely a new way of fishing for me. I've got a trot line going on here. We are in Tajikistan here. That is Afghanistan right there. Living in the wild here on Prime Revolution. So this is the way this works. You leave your rock out there until they eat it down to the gill plate, and you reel it in, you got three. The area in which we were hunting, it's located on the borderline of Tajikistan, China, and Afghanistan. It's called the Wakhan Corridor. Historically, this place was uh, part of the Great Game between the Russian Empire and the British Empire. Here is the place where it was divided between these two empires. It's a great place, and I hope a lot of more hunters will come here. Here you'll definitely see lots of rams. I think the first day we actually hunted, we saw 500 sheep. This is unbelievable. This is what you've come we here did, for. This has truly been an adventure of a lifetime for me. Being able to come over here, you know, with Mike and Josh and Mike. Expectations are always different. Uh, you can read magazines and watch other TV shows and listen to other people that have been on these kind of hunts. I've learned over my many years of being fortunate enough to uh, be a hunter and be out in the field. I never go off of other people's expectations until I actually get to where I'm going and experience it for myself. It was almost a surreal feeling. I, I don't know what other word I can use to describe it. Not many people in the world can say, I hunted Marco Polo sheep. In Tajikistan, probably 90 to 100 people hunt uh, Marco Polo a year. The hunting which is here, it's an uh, extreme hunting. You need to be ready and fit for it. The hunting we do is a bit hard, at the same time it's relaxed. We cater to the hunter's needs. It's a wonderful hunt, but it's not for the faint of heart. And a Marco Polo hunt done the right way is uh, definitely a very memorable experience. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, but this has been an emotional trip up and down, up and down. We got it done, but it wasn't pretty on that second day, I'll tell you that right now. I don't know that I've ever been that emotional when I shot that sheep. When Clint and Mike shot at the same time, on one, two, three, it was amazing. It was awesome. One, two, three, <laughs> three. bang. We and, both uh, almost shot instantaneously. The proof is in the pudding, and it yeah. did it again. This is the most epic hunt ever. <laughs> I know people overuse this word, but it was absolutely an epic day. That was probably a pretty surreal moment for me, wanting to shoot a, a Marco Polo sheep my whole entire life, and now being able to do it when I'm 52 years old, you know. This was a dream of Clint's for a long time to come kill a Marco Polo sheep. 
Clint kept pushing and saying, I'm getting too old, I gotta go now, I want you to go. I'm really glad that he did, because this is some very beautiful, unforgiving country where these animals live. Glad that we, we booked the hunt and made this experience happen. The whole trip has been a great memory and one that I'll remember uh, forever and talk about and share forever.